Hey, what's up? This is AMD here. We're continuing our brain expansion, our voyage of discovery, looking at some cool up and coming designers, people that you might not have heard of, but nonetheless are putting out some pretty cool and interesting things. We're really looking today in the kind of high fashion, the luxury fashion space. So definitely expect to see some experimentation, some a little bit of pushing the boat out. And these are all things that hopefully over time are gonna start being stocked on more and more retailers, making them more accessible and giving them a little bit of better representation. Some of these guys have already been involved in collaborations with household names like Converse and Adidas, and that's really a great way of helping brands like this to start coming up to the forefront a little bit more. And that's definitely something I think with a lot of the brands here that that's gonna start happening more frequently. So you're getting the heads up on these guys before they end up on some massive collab that really propels them into stardom. We're gonna be looking at a bunch of different things which you might wanna keep track of, especially if you've got your eye on some of those end of season sales that might start popping up in a couple of months time. And that is where our spirit guide, Shop Tagger, descends gracefully from the heavens to help with all of our organization and potential cash saving needs. And they're very kindly the paid sponsors of this video. So here's how it works. The quickest way is to get yourself the shop tagger browser button. I very rarely impulse buy things. I tend to save them for later, you know, think about it a bit, maybe see if they go on sale. So this is pretty handy for exactly that. It's reminded me of things that I've seen in the past, which I thought were cool, but then kind of forgotten about. Like these Instapump Furies, which are now on sale. There's a little web browser called Chrome, don't know if you've heard of it, but just download the free add-on from their web store or through the link in the description, which is even easier. Super quick to do, obviously, and once installed, you'll have yourself the button. Lying in wait like a wild Pokemon in long grass, but coming in hot when you land on a supported retailer. No Pokeballs needed to catch those products though, because you can use the button to save any product of your choosing, along with its size and color and a discount threshold, so you can be notified via email or push notification if you have the app, if it drops in price or if it comes back in stock. You can also save freshly caught products to different lists to keep things nice and organized. You got one area for your legendaries, one for your level 100s. Organize things however you like. Also on the desktop version, ShopTagger can scan for coupon codes at the checkout, so you can always make sure that you're getting the best price for your poker dollars. You can also get cash back on some retailers in the form of a balance, which you can then withdraw to a PayPal account. So it's well worth doing if you're on a website that you were gonna buy from anyway. I can't think of a Pokemon analogy for that, but you know how cash back works. If you wanna give that a go, there's a link in the description so you can check that out. And don't forget, using both the desktop app and the mobile app is the best way to give yourself maximum shop tag at dollar saving potential. Now onto some of these cool new designers. Feng Chen Wang is one that you might have heard of because we talked about them a couple of months ago in a sneaker video and uh, they did a Converse collab a couple of months back. But there's some really cool clothing coming from them too and SS21 is very much a continuation of the kinds of things that we saw at the tail end of last year. You've got a really nice cohesive color palette here, you've got lots of greens and khakis coming together which is right up my street in terms of colors and uh, will fit in very nicely with my wardrobe that's for sure. The hoodie in particular I think looks really cool, makes great use of those colors and you've got some material changes there as well. There's certainly a lot going on and a lot to look at but it still keeps it kind of comfy, kind of casual casual looking. It definitely minimizes the military kind of aesthetic that those colors would normally have associated with them. Now, some of the stuff that Feng Chen Wang does is not necessarily breaking new ground. You know, they've got a lot of the kind of doubled up style that we've seen for several years now from brands like Y Project, like Balenciaga as well. But I do think that implementation is maybe a little more subtle than some of those things in that some of those details really look more like just aesthetic additions rather than going for the whole it's a t-shirt staple to the front of another t-shirt. If you look at this shirt, for example, the extra collar is kind of split so far apart. It doesn't really look like the original thing that it's referencing at all. The bamboo bag, I think, has a super cool shape. It's super recognizable and distinctive as well, although it kind of makes me feel like it's one of those products that is designed to appeal to that kind of Instagram influencer type type culture. It seems like exactly the kind of bag where you'd spot like a couple of famous people wearing this thing and then suddenly it would be absolutely everywhere. Some newer stuff is selling out, some older stuff is on sale as well, so it's worth a browse to see if there's anything that you might like. And uh, they also had a Levi's collab as well, kind of between AW20 and SS21, which is not necessarily to my taste, but again, it's got some kind of interesting stuff in there. And uh, it's nice to see very classic looking pieces 
uh, done up in some new ways. Next we're going to France for Elio Emile. This is definitely the most sophisticated looking stuff, the most futuristic, the most kind of overtly tech wear, I suppose, stuff on this list as well. Definitely some aesthetic similarities with brands like Dior and Alix. Those are probably the closest things that I would put this to, but there's a little bit more emphasis on experimentation, on these kinds of layered forms and asymmetric details and stuff like that too. It's also quite smart and sophisticated thanks to the relatively frequent use of blazers and tailored suit trousers, alongside quite smart looking leather accessories as well. But that said, they do still happily use some nice substantial outerwear pieces, which obviously is right up my street. And thanks to the extreme level of cohesion over both men's and women's pieces, you'll find that everything definitely contributes to a very similar kind of aesthetic, from the jackets to the pants, right down to these cool looking hiking boots. The upcoming FW21 collection addresses ideas of artificially generated randomness, of the unpredictability of life. And uh, that's referenced in things like this shearling jacket here, which has these uneven patches on the arms, as well as this diagonal buckle detailing going across there too. Very, very glad that that isn't a cobra buckle, but it's clear that this carabiner is a recurring motif which goes across multiple seasons now and uh, does a similar kind of thing aesthetically as those now overused buckles on uh, Alix and Dior clothing. Another thing to call out is this super cool looking liquid metal stuff that they've got on a few of their new pieces. This looks really, really great in motion. It has this really intense rippling looking effect. Not sure how comfortable that's gonna to be to actually wear. It looks like it might be a bit kind of plasticky, a bit stifling, but it certainly does look extremely cool. Zyman Lee is another name you might recognize from sneaker collabs. There are a couple of, I think, underrated things with Reebok last year. Most recently, the Hydrex, which I think was a really cool silhouette and a good implementation of that sock shoe trope, I think. Although the last collection was an SS20, it seems like they're working on new stuff now, so this definitely feels like one to keep a lookout for for the future. Outside of the sneaker collabs, we see heavy use of vibrant patterns of experimental forms as well, lots of mixes of oversized and form-fitting stuff put together. Historically as well, he actually came out of the gate swinging because in 2015, he won a design prize with H&M, so uh, immediately got his own little collection with them. Why Bora set out to do one thing and do it very well, and that's knitwear. You'll see from these guys very advanced construction techniques used and a constant desire to iterate and improve on those kinds of techniques that they're using. And they'll apply that from hoodies to scarves and everywhere in between. Those extremely complex patterns and textures really do demand a close look, and it feels like aesthetically it's just very different to all the other knitwear that's on the market. This kind of approach, where it's kind of textile first, definitely demands and invites collaboration, and that's definitely something that Bybora have done a lot of fairly recently. Um, in the last year alone, we've had collections with Capital, we've had a jacket with a Descent All-Terrain, very recently there's been a collection of Porti Yoshida bags. And all of these have a slightly different approach and outcome while staying true to those advanced manufacturing techniques that have given this brand their name. Their website presents them as much a textile manufacturer as it does a consumer brand, so it really feels like their own clothing is only part of what they want to achieve. And to use those materials and those construction techniques in all kinds of different ways is well, really the sky's the limit. It just depends on what kinds of brands and what designers want to make use of this stuff and bring it to their own clothing. So who knows, we could see all kinds of people reaching out and looking to collaborate with Bybora in the future. And it seems like something the brand is very set up to do. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what comes out of them next, not just what kind of new construction techniques and technologies can they employ, but what other kinds of brands might be interested in making use of this kind of stuff and employing it in all kinds of new ways. I was debating whether or not to put Craig Green on this list because at this point he is fairly well known and I would say probably more recognizable than any of the other brands here by a fairly significant margin. Although the point of this is also about up and coming brands and it definitely feels like Craig Green is on the way up, both in terms of his popularity and in terms of his actual clothing. And it feels like things are developing and getting kind of even better with each passing collection. He takes that real uniform like approach to fashion. So you'll see lots of matching pieces, lots of tonal stuff, lots of things that are designed to match. 
there's kind of an air of sophistication with this stuff, but as always with uniform, there's always that little bit of a military reference there too, and that's definitely something that comes across in the most recent work. But yeah, it's all super cool looking stuff, I think, and there's also some kind of transitions and some pieces which are more wearable art than they are um, your regular everyday clothes. His collabs with Adidas are far from his most interesting work, I think, but it does give you a little bit of a taste of his aesthetic in a pretty easy to wear package. And in fact, I think that's one of the big benefits of Cray Green is that even though, yeah, some of these runway pieces are very experimental and very out there, very expressive, those things that actually make it to retailers are often quite the opposite. They will use that one kind of interesting motif or detail that makes it a little bit different to everything else like currently there's a lot of this kind of drawstring stuff that's getting used, but at its core, they're still all very wearable pieces. That makes the brand pretty easy to wear in a variety of scenarios with lots of essentially basic pieces, but with that little twist that makes them unique. It reminds me of something like Rick Owens in that regard where, yeah, there's loads of very crazy out there items, but then they have that recurring collection of core pieces, which really present a good stepping stone or an entry point into high fashion because you could integrate them without too much difficulty into a fairly regular wardrobe or wear them in a fairly regular way. Ziggy Chen is certainly a less established name than Cray Green, but nonetheless they have some interesting stuff to offer. The themes of reconstruction and this kind of patchwork nature are, yes, things that we have seen quite frequently in the last couple of years, but the very different source material um, makes the Ziggy Chen stuff feel a little bit different. Chen is looking back to Dadaism with this stuff. It's an early 20th century European art movement which has real roots in kind of absurdity and taking different inspirations and sources from different places and putting them together, even if at a surface level they don't necessarily seem to match. So we see here traditionally formal pieces like blazers being given all over prints. We see these different blocks of colors and textures being placed in really unusual locations on garments. We see graphic prints being applied to things like shirts as well. And all of this being wrapped up in a lookbook with a real scrapbook style presentation, which absolutely matches the theme and the ideas behind the clothing. But you only have to go back one season and you see things start looking very different. And and the clothing has as many differences as it does things in common with each other. It's really cool to see a designer who has a particular vision with each collection that changes from season to season and executes that both through the clothing itself and the material that's around that. And yet in Ziggy Chen's bio it reads ex tempore clothing or clothing outside of time. And if that's something you recognize, that is something that Errol Sin Hugh has spoken about quite frequently about his own stuff, that it is designed to be atemporal. So there's, uh, even though things aesthetically are extremely different there, maybe there's a little bit of common ground. For one final but very different option, let's check out South 2 West 8. Increasingly, clothing which combines fashion with the great outdoors has been growing in popularity, and these guys are right on trend in that respect. The FW21 collection has just been announced, and you'll see in this a real focus on that well, exactly that. This kind of outdoor focused stuff, which really makes use of heritage ideas and style. From shell jackets to fleeces, and you'll find lots of textural details here as well. Things like corduroy, quilting, gross grain, all these kinds of things could have been pulled directly from a mid 20th century British farmer's wardrobe. And yet, here they are, recontextualized and given a little bit of that Japanese streetwear appeal. That heavier leaning into patterns, textures, heritage materials definitely differentiates them from other Japanese outerwear brands like And Wonder and Snow Peak, as well as it does the rest of the market to some extent. So it'll be interesting to see how much pickup this kind of thing gets, because at the moment it feels like the trend is towards brands like Salomon and Arcteryx, which have that kind of clear technical performance element, and it's clearly a different look to what's being presented here. So who knows? we may well see uh, more and more people being interested in looking back as much as looking forwards. That said, their current SS21 stuff definitely fits the technical aesthetic more neatly, so expect to see lots more technical shell jackets and things that will appeal to all kinds of pocket lovers out there. And they've also incorporated lots of different camo variants as well. It's the kind of thing where you don't want to be seen, but you kind of also do want to be seen. 
And that just about does it for this little brand introduction video. We're kind of stepping out of the usual techwear circles here and exploring some different stuff. So uh, let us know down there in the comments if there is a particular one that stuck out to you, if there's one that you thought was really cool, or uh, maybe there's something else, some other cool up and coming designers that uh, everyone should be aware of. If, uh, if you've got anything on your mind like that, definitely stick it down there in the comments and I'll be checking them out for sure. If you enjoyed the video or uh, you found something in here that was new or interesting to you, then uh, do give it a like because it is super appreciated and as always we will be back next week with another video shout out to wolf desk good to hear that you like the kin supplies pants definitely at those kinds of prices it feels like a good option and shout out to alvin alvin on the zara techwear pieces i have seen those i think actually though because they've been out for quite a few months now the stock on them is not too great but uh yeah i'd definitely be interested in picking some of that stuff up uh, will it be better than the h&m techwear things i, I yeah want to find that out for sure Thanks for making it all the way to the end of the video. If you wanna catch some more, there's gonna be links going up at the top. And if you haven't subscribed, that's cool. No pressure, that's fine. But there is gonna be a little button around there somewhere. So uh, you can do that if you wanna be notified of cool new videos that are coming out every single week.